Okay, welcome back to Arcadian Insight. Today is Monday, July 1st, 2019, and this episode number 22. I am Matt Franceschi, and joining me today, I have Adam Wolf, Ben Bachman, and Dave Mead, and also Eggshell TV, a.k.a. Greg. Greg, thanks a lot for coming on, man. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, we are too. Hey, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit just about like your stream and just kind of what kind of community you have over there and you know what you've been working on? Uh, what kind of community do I have? Oh, God, they're all assholes. Um, <laughs> so I stream five days a week on Twitch. I'm a full-time streamer. Um, I stream Wednesday through Sunday, uh, Twitch TV slash Eggshell. I do a podcast and a YouTube channel, and you can see all that at digitalparklive.com. Uh, I created all that with my partner, Kuro Tori, who is a delight. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm kind of a variety streamer and kind of a comedy streamer. Um, and so the people who gravitate towards me uh, tend to be fans of dick jokes. Mm. Uh, but I'll do a little bit of a brag here. I'm not really a bragger, but I will yeah. say that my dick joke <laughs> fuck up friends raised $1,200 for Extra Life this past weekend during in a six hour time span. Wow. And it Holy was fucking shit. amazing. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, so they're they're actually the coolest people in the world, but hopefully they won't hear me say that. Yeah, awesome job, guys. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can cut that out or something really quick so they Please! <laughs> <laughs> No, that's really cool, man. That's that's awesome. We're actually mm -hmm. uh well I'll just get into it. The uh the trending news stories today. We're gonna talk about um first off, I hopefully I think you've heard about this. I saw you tweet about it earlier actually, but Twitch recently released the uh new feature in beta, which is the sub only streams. But it oh, seems like familiar. it's uh, it's going against a lot of like big gaming companies' terms of service. So that's going to be really interesting how that plays out. Um, so I'd love to dive into that and just get your thoughts. But uh, also, we're going to talk about Summer Games Done Quick 2019. Um, that just wrapped up, and it raised $3 million for Doctors Without Borders, which is uh, quite amazing. And uh, that, was, that beats last year's record of $2.1 million. So those guys are doing a great job over there. But uh, the main topic today... We're going to talk about our top three favorite games released in the last five years. And I really wanted to do this today because I feel like our last three podcasts following up from E3, which, you know, we had talked about how disappointed we were in, in the showing there and uh, just the whole presentation. But uh, we've been really hyper-focused, I think, on bad gaming practices and disappointing trends in the industry. And, you know, I think with all that being said... That doesn't mean that there's not still devs out there that are making really, really quality games that, that we've loved to play. So I thought we could just kind of list off our top three games, go through them, and just talk about why we love them. Can I go first? <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask for permission? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. I was raising my I, hand. I, 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 love it. I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> well, well, I think I think one that will probably be on a few other lists as well. Um, my number one would have to be Divinity Original Sin 2. I'm going to start off with that one. That was just an excellent RPG. Uh, Larian Studios really knocked that one out of the park. Yeah. Um, Are these ranks for you? Like, is that your number one? That, well, you know, I, I don't, I shouldn't rank the other ones. That one is definitely my number one, though. Um, the other two games, you know, I, I don't think they would make an all-time list for me. Um, the first one would be Kenshi. It was like a smaller kind of indie game. It seemed like more like a cult classic kind of had like this samurai harsh environment out in the desert kind of really open world aspect to it um interesting game for for anybody that wants to check that out a lot of survival mechanics that kind of thing but uh th and then rounding it out and i was kind of down on it initially mostly because i spent so much damn money on the game uh total war three kingdoms i didn't think i liked it initially i i probably sunk way too many hours into it over the past week now and it's really growing on me that's and really it, funny it, you were just talking it's, shit uh, on it. wasn't it like yeah, last week? i was, was that two so weeks ago shit on it it <laughs> was like two weeks ago i think and um <laughs> the title of the, the title of the show was like biggest gaming disappointments and i think yeah. you let off with total war <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. i mean I, I mean obviously i can i can you know Get into yeah. that a little bit more. Yeah, my yeah. change of heart, I guess. Uh, I don't know if it's my top Total War game. I wouldn't say that. But in the past five years uh, for Total War, this is definitely my my number one. And I, I played it a lot. So it's it, I'd say it's definitely deserving of of the list compared to, to, to anything else I've come across. 
Cool. Greg, why don't you go ahead? Uh, okay. Um, so, okay, we'll do a countdown style. Um, yeah. So, number three for me was uh, Near Automata, uh, which I call Near Auto Tomato. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys are familiar with this game. Though, I, but am. Sort of an, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's sort of an action JRPG um, with an incredible story. And really, what the game does so well, it sort of blends, it's sort of half action JRPG, half shoot 'em up almost. Um, and it blends gameplay into story um, in just a really unique, creative way. Um, the example I always use like on how not to do this is like a traditional JRPG where it's like, here's your combat system and here's your story. And they are separate things. Um, whereas near it just like blends the experience together so beautifully. Uh, it's got an amazing soundtrack, fun characters. Um fun's really the wrong word it's like kind of dark but yeah. <laughs> it's it's so good it's, it's so like good it's kind of fun up front and then yeah. you kind of get to the dark yeah. shit yeah, like yeah. as you play yeah and then it takes a really really scary turn yeah um so that was my number three um my number two which i just shit all over traditional jrpgs is persona five um because i like pretending to be a cool kid in high school uh, because I was a fucking loser in high school. <laughs> let's, let's get chance number two well, at that. I, yeah, I, yeah. Hey, let's talk about that some more here. Go, go <laughs> yeah, can you expand that. on that? Yeah. No, dude, I've heard um, wonderful things about that game. It seems like anyone that plays it, everybody it, loves it. in love with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's phenomenal. And it's, it's, if you're not like a big JRPG person, um, it's a great entry point because it just brings so much sort of style and flash. Uh, an excitement to kind of the turn-based combat that I did just sort of crap all over. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And that was one I actually kind of played through with my wife a little bit. Um, and then my number one, which is my number one all-time favorite game for a variety of reasons, um, is The Witcher 3. Um, I absolutely worship the ground that that game walks on. Um, for a lot, of, I, I don't know. I have a lot of personal reasons why regarding the story um and i okay i'll just i'll tell the cliff's notes version which is basically you know if you're not familiar and i don't want to i don't want to spoil anything but um uh, basically the story is the relationship between Geralt um and kind of his adopted ward slash daughter who's not a biological daughter and i have two adopted daughters of my own um mm -hmm. and the way they present that story i'm literally like getting goosebumps right now um the way they present that story and that relationship is perfect it is exactly what it's like stark um, similarities huh yeah to be in that situation and i think it's a phenomenal game on top of that i think just what pushes it over the edge for me on a personal level um is that whole dynamic um just a phenomenal game yeah yeah we we talk about that a lot on the podcast is how these stories you know when they're more personal to us and it's more engaging and you can enter the world <laughs> yeah more fully and everything so that that makes sense that it yeah. would be one of your favorites oh yeah yeah i cried many times playing through that <laughs> yep did um, you did you play was it uh did you play the earlier one i did so i played and that's the other thing is i played the witcher on release like with the three minute load times to go into <laughs> one house and like all the bullshit. And I loved it. I mean, I was one of those guys that kind of saw what they were trying to build there. Um, like it was broken and janky and the combat was literally just like a quick time system. I mean, it was garbage, um, but I could kind of see what was underneath the garbage. Um, and so then Witcher 2 came out and, oh, I pre-ordered the special edition. I get all yeah. hyped. I mean, I'm just, I'm a huge fan of the whole series. Yeah read the books i have the books and i've read the first one and the others sit on my bookshelf taunting me every day <laughs> uh, and i'm actually going to the beach and i was thinking maybe i'll finally work through them here in a couple weeks i'm cool. hoping that they can replicate the experience with cyberpunk which i'm sure that they will mm -hmm. um they've had such a great track record but yeah, my fingers are crossed was that was that three that was only two uh near saying? persona and witcher 3 oh Sorry. persona okay mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. okay um now mine these aren't in any order um divinity yep. um divinity 2 yeah i love that game i've played i've played that <laughs> i've played the beginning of that game probably like 30 times now i think matt and yeah uh, have you ever beaten it i'm working on it right now 
Okay, well, I haven't either, well, but I've also started it like 30 times. That's really strange. Well, dude, it's because like you're like, oh, I want to do this build or, you know, it just seems like every playthrough you're doing, you're finding like a new little area or cooler items or <clears throat> you make a cooler build that you like. It's There's just so much replayability to it. And the story is good enough that like you don't actually mind going through it again. Yeah, I feel like the interactions between the main characters that you get to choose from that have their own dialogue is unique enough with different parties and things that it makes it like fun to go through again. Yeah. Love that game. And then I just played uh, just real quick. I ha haven't played a lot of new games. I, I replay old games, like mostly like old RPGs and stuff. Um, so I haven't played a lot of new games. So this is kind of, was a kind of a hard one for me. Um, Doom, uh, the new, the new 2016 Doom. I love that game. The the fucking uh, soundtrack that Mick Gordon does. I know Matt always gives me <laughs> Matt always gives me grief to talk about Mick Gordon, but that soundtrack. I listen to that soundtrack all the time when I'm working out, and I get so fucking pumped. <laughs> Seriously, it makes me just want to like rip someone's head off. <laughs> Uh, but the game plan that is really good. The story was, you know, mediocre, but everything else was good. Um, when you go down into hell, it's it's like beautiful and sick, and at the same time, because there's like blood and guts and dead bodies and <clears throat> everything hanging around. And uh, egg, you said you never played it, huh? No, I have played Doom. Okay. Oh yeah, I played. So I played through Doom when that came out. My younger daughter was like. Four and a half, five. At oh the yeah, time. That, you told me about that. And yeah. she watched the whole thing with Daddy, and she had nightmares for a month. Ah! It was incredible. <laughs> yeah, I really liked it. Um, I thought it was really good. Um, really good. Hey, so can uh, I but, can I ask okay. you though, like yeah. backtracking the whole like Larian Studios thing? Like, are you guys yeah. hyped to get for the new Boulder Skate? Oh, oh my god, dude! Oh. They're yeah. also making like a, a new tactics game as well. That's gonna be it's gonna yeah. play like Final Fantasy Tactics, but it's like the party system and combat from Divinity. Right. I'm and in love, I love with everything that they're doing. Love. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 hopefully they do it correct. If they do do it correct with the the tactics type game, I'm gonna mm. shit my pants. Especially if you're like can get re can customize um classes and everything real mm. in, in a real in depth way. I will be really happy with that. I feel like there's so many devs and studios nowadays, at least currently, that we're like trying to avoid their games because they just haven't been great. And this is like what I'm actually trying to avoid talking about because we keep talking about this. But Larian is one of the studios that we talk about and really give high praise for, like in the same mm -hmm. breath as like CD Projekt Red. Mm -hmm. They're that good. That's why I'm so excited. What else have Ponder they made? State uh, j just pretty much. Did, were they? We we only know them from the Divinity series. Yeah, Divinity. Yeah. I mean, those but, um, games are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. They're fantastic. That what? that whole idea of them making the new Baldur's Gate game. Mm -hmm. I know Matt and Ben were saying how many times they've played that that intro just to <sighs> Divinity Original Sin Two, but they do such a good job of uh, giving you enough like dialogue options to make the story play out in different elements, like different ways. So enough variety and choice to make everything feel fresh no matter how many times you go through it. And I think that was one of the biggest strengths of the original like Baldur's Gate and Baldur's mm -hmm. Gate 2 series. So if they can kind of bring that back to life um, for Baldur's Gate 3, I, I mean, I don't see anybody else doing quite quite as well in recent years with that kind of, I don't know, that player choice in your impact on the world. They They, they do it the best right now. Certainly, yeah um what what the hell was i gonna say <laughs> um what's your other one ben the last one is lisa which it's an rpg the story and the and the soundtrack in this one it's like really weird abstract um electronic music um i, I love soundtracks if, as you can probably tell but this one's like a dystopia um there's a lot in this in the story in this one there's a lot of like variables that like you have to like come up with in in your own head because they don't they don't give you all the information in the story but essentially all the women got killed somehow probably a disease or something like that <laughs> and uh there's only one child left and all the men are like crazy and shit they're all like doing drugs it's like a 
dystopian world and essentially the main character is trying to save this girl it's rpg there's lots of cool characters and it was a really small developer to do i think it was actually only two guys um and it's it's a really good rpg for for two guys doing it it looks hilarious it from is, everything it, I've seen, it's, it's the funniest looking game. I've to seen people in a who are going to try it, or potentially will try it out, it is morbid as shit, and it's like re- it, there's some really nasty shit in it. So, <laughs> uh, Dave, what? Perfect, Dave. Why don't you go ahead? All right. Well, let me just qualify mine first because, like, you guys like that like single player story shit. Like, as I got older, I, I need like the multiplayer like lot. You know what I mean? Like playing against other people like i need the competition that's like my thing so let me start by saying that and i'm obviously a blizzard fanboy and that's like all i fucking play so but i i threw i threw one in there that you guys will be like whoa i can't believe you said that perfect (laughs) but i'm in in no no specific order like no one two three just top three uh first one is gonna be here's the storm because nice. like has to be right well yeah we play it like every day so yeah it probably should be on there i mean yeah i mean we play it a lot it's a really fun game it's just a little unfortunate how um it kind of you know fell apart they cut like all the yeah. production team and all the esports and everything i but feel like I, I feel like all that made me do is switch from like taking it seriously and playing ranked a bunch to just playing a lot of quick match you know and like not yeah. worrying about how good i am and just yeah, going on right. and yeah, that and like when there's no like competitive scene really anymore, like I don't know, it's like less stressful. You don't care, you know what I mean? It's just like you just have fun, mm-hmm. which is probably a good thing. Uh, another one in the top three for me, obviously, is going to be Hearthstone because I mean, it's probably the best card game, like virtual card game right now, most popular as well. And just like how, the, how you can streamline it between the computer. You know, PC, iPhone, iPad, Android. You know what I mean? It's it's nice just to be able to like play it anywhere and have all the same shit. Yeah. Plus, the new expansion is like really good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then my final one, which nobody's gonna see coming, is gonna be the original Titanfall. Yeah, oh, I actually no. didn't see that coming. Which. I think it was slightly over five years. It might be like five years in a couple months, but disqualified. Close we'll, Sorry, we'll allow it. Close enough. But the original Titanfall, like the multiplayer in that game, was incredible. Like the just being like you know, like it was like almost like Call of Duty esque, where like you're running around killing each other, but then you like charge up and you get your you know you get your mech, and you can call down your your fucking I forget what I guess it was a Titan. Yeah, you call down your Titan, <laughs> and then there's like. <laughs> But it was, I don't know, it was just cool, and it was a lot of, like, I played with my friends, and we played that shit all the time, and it was just a cool, like, another aspect to a shooter where, like, you know, you pilot this giant mech, but, like, you still have to be careful, because the little, like, the little pilots could still, like, you know, blow your shit up or whatever, it, it was mm-hmm. just... Did you play Titanfall 2? I never, no, I did not play Titanfall 2. Oh, okay. I, I, I like Titanfall. Just... Yeah, it was just, I, it was a unique game, and I think it was really underappreciated, and maybe, you know, not as mainstream as it should have been. Yeah. Um no, I don't you didn't play Apex, did you, Dave? No. No. Um that the, the Apex kind of the pilots, the characters in Apex kind of remind me of the pilots and Titanfall. Oh, really? A little bit, yeah. Um I really like Titanfall. I thought it was cool. Like uh, it didn't <clears throat> seem like it lasted for very long, but Yeah, it, it was weird. It wasn't I don't popular know. Popular for very long. Yeah, I don't know if it like just wasn't marketed good th- enough or what. I think that might have been Around when maybe PUBG was coming out. No, that's probably a little before that. A little bit before that, but something going. Maybe Overwatch. Hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out why that. I know there was a popular (laughs) in that time, and I I think Call really good release right around then. You know, one of the many Call of Duties. Yeah. Yeah. Right. (laughs) But they hit a home run right around the same time. Yeah. Yeah, it's just I don't know. It, it was well, a pretty, it was a really fun game for me, and I'm surprised. I'm a little unfortunate that didn't, um, you know, get a little bit more recognition. Yeah, I thought you might have gone uh, Garden Warfare, but 
a pretty tough game. I was but... actually praying for it, but yeah. That was Garden Warfare. <laughs> it's the Plants vs. Zombies first-person shooter that they came out with. Uh, uh, and Dave, Dave and I used to play it on Xbox, and I used to go over it. It's actually like, I, it sounds hilarious, but it's a great game. I can't even picture that. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a little wonky. It's, but... like, it's like incredibly chaotic, too. There's like so much shit going on. Yeah. Is it like, what's the game mode i don't, I don't get it it's like a deathmatch mode isn't it dave they have deathmatch they have like you know what i mean like you have to go like secure a point and then like oh, that kind of shit so and, it's online then you yeah it's all yeah, people it's, yeah, okay. yeah right right okay but you're just like you're just playing the characters from plants for zombies like yeah you can be like a like a sunflower or something or you can be oh, like they're a, get, get off no, this stupid <laughs> ass <laughs> shit it's a good game all right, I'll jump into mine. Um, I don't know. Mine might be surprising. They might not be too, because I, I probably talk about these games a lot. But first one's Divinity. I think we've we've talked enough about it. I don't need to jump into it. But I don't think we talked about the soundtrack at all. The soundtrack from that game is incredible. I listen to it on a weekly basis. I think it's really well done. Um, but my second one is Hollow Knight. I don't know if anybody's played that. Oh, I need to. People keep telling me to play that game. Yeah, it's uh, like a Metroidvania style. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really dark as well, but like that's the kind of themes that that I normally like. So, uh, I, I really gravitated towards it. But the soundtrack there as well, awesome. The art style too, and the combat is really tight. Like the controls are really tight. Like the jumping and the 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 attacks and everything. It feels really good when you're playing. And um, I was either gonna put this game or Ori in the Blind Forest on here, and I went with Hollow Knight instead. I, I think that it's my, I think I prefer Hollow Knight to Ori. So there's a sequel coming, yeah. For Hollow Knight, yeah, you get to play as um, one of the characters in that you 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 run into and actually fight this character a few times in the in the original. I need to play that game. Yeah, it's I, it's really worth it. The, what I will say about Hollow Knight is I think it's like fifteen bucks. It's so worth the money. Like the amount of content that you get for fifteen bucks is insane. So yeah. I, I think Josh, as, as a my, product, my brother just played it. He said he loved it. Um, he fucking tore through that. Um, so the yeah, art was yeah. really cool, and he really liked the story and everything. Yeah, it's it's definitely worth it. And then the last one I have on here is um, <clears throat> what remains of Edith Finch. Mm. I don't know if anybody even knows what that is or has played it, but uh, I'm familiar with it, but I've never played it. I've heard amazing things. Yeah, I loved it. It was one of the games that, you know, I just kind of bought one day, like, randomly. Because it had good reviews, and, um... I mean, it's just, like, one of those games that you just kind of walk through, and, you know, you're just on, like, a path, and there, there's no, like, action or anything. It's basically just, like, a story-driven first-person game that you just kind of right. go through. And um, But really, the, the story is, without trying to ruin it, it's you play as Edith Finch... And you go back to your old house from whenever you were a kid. And as you go through the house, um, it's like a very strange house too. Like the way that the rooms and the layout are set up, it's very, very unique. Um, like as you go through, you find like secret paths and stuff that you wouldn't think are there. But you go through and you find each uh, individual's room of the Finch family. And they're all dead now. And you find their journals and things. And as you read their stories, you get to relive uh, all of their deaths like through their point of view and they all died like very uniquely as well it's really cool i don't want to go further than that but i really recommend it if you're terrifying yeah Ah! yeah, no there are some there are some deaths that are like really shock you um that we like um, the morbid shit yeah they hit you like pretty hard but it's not chills yeah it's not like gory or anything i thought you didn't like the story based strictly story based like uh what is it what's the one telltale yeah telltale Thought you didn't like those, Matt, or is that Wolf that was talking shit the one podcast? I've never played I was it. Ta- I've never I was played Telltale. Shit on so. it. Yeah. Okay. Then I just, you know, you and Matt, you and Matt and Wolf are so like, you know, I just got them mixed up. Yeah. Sure. To, to, <laughs> to clarify, I was very specific. I think it was The Walking Dead, and I just wanted like a real Walking Dead game, not the Telltale. Yeah. Press the A button to keep going through the story oh my god i yeah. loved that game. yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> what are the wrong I'm... things do you think about life oh, uh, man. Uh, <laughs> i like sorry. i like the wolf among us i, I thought that was that a cool uh, it, was, it was a cool one so uh i think just to expand on this further 
uh like one of the main questions i wanted to ask was like obviously like we've played a ton of games in the last five years and you know i'm sure that we've liked more than just these three but you know what what made you i know we talked about it a little bit but like what made you guys choose your top three above the other games and maybe this is like a, dis a discussion that we need to have about quality and, and why we think certain games are better than others but like what what when you play a game what really makes you think like oh man this is like a really fucking great game like this is an experience that that i've just loved having hmm. that's a tough one man and i feel like my list doesn't really represent like my Me my too. true feelings on on like you know my all-time favorite games but in the past five years, it's kind of been like a different, different experience for me. It's hmm. really whatever I can, I can, I can really sink some hours into like replayability. Hmm. That's probably the biggest thing for me right now. Um, yeah, that, I've, I've noticed that in Wolf's selection over the years, because I've been with him with a lot of, <laughs> a lot of his selection. He loves replayability. Yeah. I mean, is that one of the main things you look for, I guess? is Right, just... exactly. I mean, I don't think I would have included total War three kingdoms um uh if, if it weren't if that weren't the case I, I was really down the reason i was really down on the game at first is you know i was kind of hyped up um just for the idea of obviously like a, a dynasty warriors game like adaptation into something a little more deeper than just like mindlessly killing hundreds of chinese people <laughs> it just there was obviously going to be a little bit more depth to this game here and i love the total war franchise as it is and the the story like you know the romance of the three kingdoms is pretty cool and i thought that i was going to be getting a lot more story element this this kind of like played out um like retelling of a really really crazy turmoil kind of time in china Pretty wild story as far as what was real and fake i, I have no idea i'm not yeah. that learned on it but um what i ended up getting was was not that there was very few story elements just essentially just kind of like a bare bones kind of total war game but what it does have is it has like all of those really famous like generals from like the dynasty warriors games and really all i've been doing in it is just kind of like playing like Pokemon, like gotta catch them all kind of thing. Like, man, I gotta like go find Lubu and get them like immediately before like somebody kills them or something. And I'm just trying to like record like all the best dudes on my team. But I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be that down. I mean, that game has done, done some good things as far as um, I know people are talking a lot to like the diplomacy aspects of it. Uh, it's probably the best iteration that's ever been. Like the the computer makes smart choices on how it handles itself, like diplomatically. People ally with each other. They form giant coalitions, which which is cool, and it, it kind of is representative to like that romance of the Three Kingdoms like setting, which which does make for interesting games that you can just keep coming back to over and over again. So really, I guess the the takeaway, and it, probably just with the other two, I know we, I touched on it briefly with with Divinity, um, you can keep coming back to it and it's always going to be a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that would be just a real quick, um, and I'll let someone else go, but uh, the diplomacy aspect, if they could have made that more realistic in the romance games, that would have been so much cooler because um, they, they had, there was, it, it was a little bit in the romance games that some of the alliances and, um, when people would wage war on each other and stuff made sense, but a lot of it was just random. It felt like, you know, um, right. so if, if they were able to create like an AI, you know, um, an AI learning thing or something or set good, uh, roles for the, um, AI in order based off the history of, um, the, who had alliances and stuff like that'd be really cool, but I don't know if, if it's even capable. You, you're saying that it is. <laughs> well, they kind of do it to a, a sense, like they'll give you an option, like, well, here's what happens in the story. You can make this choice and follow and go against the story. But it only happens like once or twice, right at the beginning of the game for each character. And then it, it usually just never comes up again. Okay. So it's like a very loose story, <laughs> like re retelling, where, whereas in previous iterations of, of the Total War games, like 
Warhammer 2, that that whole campaign that game was based on was like really heavily story driven. So I was kind of surprised that I didn't get something similar. Yeah. Mm. I would love to try to expand on what you said earlier, like whenever you first started talking about <clears throat> the subject, just whenever you said that the games that you put in your top five, like, or in your top three weren't uh, games that you thought you would put in there, or like aren't actually your favorite games of, of all time. Uh, and I think I heard Greg like say that he agreed as well, but uh, do you feel like that's just because maybe like the products of the games that we're getting nowadays are a little bit different? Or do you feel like maybe your just personal preferences have changed a little bit, or maybe it's a mixture of, of just everything? I think I think I'm staying the same and I think the gaming like industry what kind of games they need to get out there to sell and what's quick to make and what's profitable is is definitely changed from like 10 years ago. So these these like longer more played out games are, are kind of the things I'm I I gravitate towards, but these the, the three I picked aren't aren't the best at at what they do compared to like previous iterations of them. So I, I think it's me staying the same and everything changing around me, unfortunately. Yep. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I'm story driven. I really like to be immersed and I really like to like have a lot of details about the characters and have their, have their little side stories and it all just come together and, and really immerse you into the world. And that's why I really like RPGs. Um, especially like older RPGs. <clears throat> and yeah, I don't really find that. I mean, the, the, I don't want to like, I know that we were down on the industry for like pumping out bad games and shit, but th there's a lot of good games out there too. It's just, they're different. And um, I, I feel like as the industry gets bigger, there's going to be n newer and newer mechanics and different routes that developers take. And it, it's, it's just changing. And I, I'm kind of like the, old man in the cave with with my stick like leave me alone like you know like <laughs> get the hell out of here <laughs> so for me it feels like like the reason i was kind of agreeing at first is because when i think about what's going to make a great gameplay experience i think it's gameplay like that's what instinctively comes to mind like so I've been on this mean auto chess kick lately i don't know if any of you guys are doing the dota underlords mm. thing or anything I've like seen that. it yeah Looks i've been great. watching yeah. it yeah super addictive like if you have any sort of like puzzle solving type mind you just totally get hooked on it um and i've played a ton of warframe over the past couple of years i've played a ton of the division like these are games that are just like totally vapid just pure gameplay but as i sat here thinking about it i think what it is is that when you take that next step like you can make a mediocre game that people will enjoy as long as the game plays halfway decent but when i just do like a mediocre story game i just sit there and go i should just be reading a book i should be watching a movie if all i'm going to get is a mediocre story mm -hmm. um so when then you take the next step into okay top three games of the last five years then you're melding the two then it's great gameplay with great story like i you know i talked about with near um, how it's about the synergy between gameplay and story with those two. Like Persona 5, I, I love JRPG combat because to me, that's a puzzle game. To me, I'm solving rock, paper, scissors battle and I don't know about full min-maxing. I'm not that guy. But you're trying to figure out what's going to be best. Um, and so, like I said, m mediocrity can survive if that mediocrity is in gameplay. Like if you've ever played Warframe, th that to me is t what that is. Um, but when mediocrity is just based like a mediocre telltale excuse me telltale game would be awful like that would just be awful to me i right. should just go read a book right um but then when you get into the, the territory of greatness you need to combine the two yeah and i i think good examples of that are like the witcher 3 which has, mm. was on a couple of people's lists mm. uh that's like gameplay keeping you engaged through the gameplay and mm. the story is just fucking amazing mm -hmm. as well Mm -hmm. And they have this, the mechanics with the the um with with the armor and the weapons and everything that are keeping you engaged as well. So it's really we talk about this extensively in other podcasts, but it's really hard to find that balance of where like you're not heavy in one area, so you're like, oh well, I want more story, you know. Right. It, it, it's really hard to find that balance. And these developers, mm -hmm. they have quite a chal challenge challenge, mm -hmm. you know, especially as expect expectations just get higher and higher and higher. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I totally but I, I agree with you. I agree with the egg, one hundred percent, Greg egg. I totally agree with both of you. I think that that was those are great points and, and very well said uh, on both of your parts. But I think like for me, not only is it the the combination of the story and the gameplay, but I also really like a certain uniqueness to the story, um, like a story or a story that's told in a certain way that I haven't seen before or that I haven't personally experienced. And I think that's that's why I chose What Remains of Edith Finch. And I'm actually surprised that I did choose that, but I think it's because it is so unique. You know, and I did describe like how the game plays out. Like there isn't anything else like that that I can think of that tells the tale through those journals and, and through those, you know, death scenes that I kind of just touched on briefly. But I think for me, like that that's where I find quality is when and I think that you find that in near as well. You know, I can't yeah. think of another game or a story that's that's quite like near. Right. Yeah, and, that, and that's a really good point, Matt. Those are the, a lot of the games that were were so attached to. Um, in my in my case, you know, RPGs and stuff like th- they were unique. The story was unique, and um, all the new mechanics and things that they added they they, they were they were the first um, you know f- first introduced. And that now it seems like when people try to replicate that they just don't have the correct balance or the story shit or so that's a really that's a really good good point uh, the newness of something you know the novelty yeah did anyone oh go ahead adam sorry oh i was gonna say i mean really isn't that like the hard part though like that's the risk that that they're all taking to to make something unique and i feel like more more often than not you're probably going to strike out on um on an idea then and then like you know really come up with something amazing like that that edith finch um premise sounds 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 like pretty amazing i'm not a big as you know of like that that just kind of you hold your hand through the through the game kind of story um but, right. but that's honestly something that that sounds like an experience that that i definitely want to have it, it sounds different unique like that's that's like a cool kind of it just hasn't been done by, by at least the aunt that I know of by somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Well, I actually, I don't know if anybody else had like trouble putting together their top three from the past five years, but I actually had trouble pulling together, not because there were so many games that I liked so much, but I think that I had trouble finding those unique experiences in the past five years. And that's why I had trouble. And I think, I think Greg hit the nail on the head and I usually don't think about this, but you know, I'm really craving that unique experience. And I think that a lot of people are craving that new story or that new character that they love. And if you can't get it in the game that you're playing, you'll just go watch a movie or you'll go read a new book. You know, you don't need to get into a game, right? Unless you're craving the competitive. There's there's different mediums for that, that are more effective. Hmm. Like John Wick. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I like John Wick. No. I haven't seen any of those movies. Oh no! <laughs> oh boy! Oh, Ben, you uh, haven't either. No. Wow. The hell How's the matter with people? you people? I just saw Iron Man one a week ago. What you I like foreign films. Uh, I didn't care for it. Yeah. <laughs> So here's the thing, like I didn't see any of these movies and now my daughter's going into junior high and I'm like, well, I need to win your love. So we're going to watch all the Marvel movies this summer and I'm going to be the coolest dad ever. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> so you, you didn't get on like the Marvel hype train or anything? Nah, I, I was too busy playing video games. I don't know. I just never, <laughs> I don't yeah, know. You can't. I hate it's, movies because I'm like, I want to play with my hands right now. I need to like have a keyboard in front of me. Like I get it's, bored. <laughs> it's strange. Um... It seems like the Marvel movies are like synonymous with video game players, but at the same yeah, time, yeah. there's like the fringe people like us who are like, "Fuck that shit! I want to play my games." Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything yeah. like on the horizon that you guys are looking forward to in the gaming industry, games wise? I mean, I'm sure you know something like Cyberpunk, but anything that's kind of flown under the radar. Uh, I think Super Mario Maker 2 just came out. I always thought those were pretty interesting. I never played any of those. I th- I thought that like I mean there you can like build your own Mario levels and shit. I think that's it's a pretty cool premise. I might it's not necessarily like the best game ever, but I think it's like it's cool. I see the Nintendo peeps tweeting about that a lot and talking about that a lot. Th- those are really cool. I I don't know 
I want to get on. This yeah, I, 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 I could see you getting into that wolf. Well, the when when people make their own <laughs> levels like those, um, like those Kaizo Mario levels, I know they do them at the like the game's done quick every once in a while, like the super hard, like crazy. You didn't think you could do that in Mario stuff. Like they're yeah. like flying around the map. Like that's really entertaining to watch. Like that's, I mean, that's, I, I could, I could put that up against just about anything as far as like entertainment ah. and watching it. I mean, you get hours and hours watching people do those things. It's just unbelievable level of skill. And like who, who even thinks that the, the idea is up? They're really creative. It's a Super Mario I mean, maker too. It, it, it's like an art, man. <laughs> it's it like, is. I mean, like that's, expressing that's cool the stuff stuff. through the prism of Mario, you know. <laughs> right. I mean, they took something that I mean, at it, its core, it was really pretty simple. Like you're just, yeah, a little plumber, like jumping on blocks and avoiding plants. But then they turned it into like this unbelievably complex, like you know, problem solving to to get through it. Something I could never never dream. So probably do, but it's really great to watch. I don't know um, the Pokemon. It seems like a lot of good stuff has been coming out of Nintendo, and I don't really play a lot of Nintendo stuff, like the old school stuff I do. But um, those Fire Emblem games that keep coming out, yeah, people go, yeah. people rave about them. Do you do you play a lot of Nintendo? Yeah, a little bit. I did the Fire Emblem back the first 3DS one I did. Um, and I love that one. And then the next 3DS one, I don't know if I just felt like it was the same thing all over again or whatever. Yeah. But didn't didn't hook me. Yeah, um, I put pl- I played one. I played one of them, and it was good. I don't think I beat it, but I got pretty far in it. And then um, I was I was researching the, the one that was coming out. They have a lot of them, and um, it, it seemed like the same thing to me. <laughs> so I I, I didn't yeah. jump on it. Yeah. So, does anybody else have anything they want to say just on like upcoming games or <clears throat> games that they've liked, like recent games they've liked before we jump down to the trending section? Oh well, uh, one I've have been thinking about it now that Wolf was bringing it up. He was getting me all inspired. Was the Pokemon that they're talking the Sword and, oh, the sword it, what and is Shield? It? it does sound yeah. really good. Yeah, the Probably open that, open yeah. world. Yeah, that sounds so fucking cool to me. I can't believe they haven't done that yet. Mm. You know, like it seems like that would just be fucking. They could do anything with that, you know. They've been saving that idea. What it feels like for an eternity. Like when I was a little kid, it was like Pokemon and Final Fantasy VII. And I'm like, why don't they just like kind of put these two ah! concepts together a little bit more? And I want like a more open worldy, more RPG ish kind of yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, like Skyrim, but Pokemon like. Yeah. Right. I mean, who, would, who it's, wouldn't buy it? It's always yeah. seemed like a no-brainer. Yeah, like who wouldn't really? buy it? It, ha- it has to be. It, it would make the most money, like ever. I swear to God. They're really they could micro checks in the fuck out of that game, and I would be like, <laughs> so, I'd, I'd be poor. I'd be in a box, like fucking play the game. <laughs> just you and your switch. Yeah. But I mean, they. It's just like kind of every iteration of it. I, I really haven't played many of them since like the first couple but uh they've just kind of been like just trickling trickling it out just slowly slowly working towards this the, the pinnacle of pokemon here and i feel like we're almost there this this, this may be it this may be what i dream about it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like an eight or nine year old like this is this is what i've wanted on you know how many game boys i've broke from <laughs> okay <laughs> exciting times in pokemon world you know let's go baby let's go let's put all of our positive energy towards that i want it to go i want it to be good i'm sure it will be i hope so i have total faith what about um borderlands 3 anyone in on those <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. Um, we played a pretty good amount of Borderlands too. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you know what really turns me off to Borderlands is like the constant walking around from place to place. And I know they have like the transporters, like you know, pretty it well placed. But I feel a like there's a bit lot of, of traversing. I've never really thought of that. You are right. Well, maybe they're trying to get you to get in, you know, enjoy the world or something. I don't. You know. are supposed to get in a vehicle a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's true mm-hmm. too. No, are you excited for that though? Are you gonna play that? Yeah, I'll play the shit out of that for sure. That's sort of my traditional home on the channel too, is looter shooters. So 
even if I didn't want to, I would have to at this point. But I am excited for it. When does that release? September, I think. Oh, September. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Those are addicting, though. I mean, yeah, the first be. one really hooked me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I played a lot with my brother on the first one. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so similar, like the, I, I guess, like Diablo and and things like that, kind of have that similar, yeah, premise where you're just like killing stuff and looting it and just yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, addic- a it's addicting. Bit. It's so good. Borderlands probably does it better than. I, I don't know. It, it's more fun. It just because the. It seems more exciting. The game plays That's better good. than than in Diablo. I mean, people go crazy for Diablo in the in those type of games. I don't really like it. I I, I can't stand it when you're fighting like a bajillion things and it's like mm. you can't even see the fucking what's going on and mm. shit. It's like it's I've heard I've heard really good things about uh, Path of Exile. It's incredible. Oh, you play it? Oh, it's, gosh. No, oh, my gosh. Did that come out in the last five years? Scratch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Numbers one, two, and three. Path of I thought you were playing that, uh, Matt. Or what, what other? We played it for it. a minute. I Great. tried it. Yeah, I have a friend that's really into it. Um, So, so we hopped on it. But no, uh, you don't know who he is, unfortunately. Oh, that game's like a mid max Sorry. Dream. Yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. No, Damn, I, I've heard really good out? things about it. 2013. They, aren't they coming out with a new one? Path of Exile? Yeah. Nah. I'm getting a, I'm getting a different... So. I'm, I'm they, thinking they keep, of a different game. They keep adding expansions and stuff. Or... It might be an expansion mm. then. And I tried Grim Dawn as well. I don't know if you've ever played that, Greg. I have, It's kind yeah. of that hack and slash. I like that. I didn't I didn't care for that. I am a bit of an ARPG fanboy. Um, and, uh, yeah, I didn't... Grim Dawn didn't really hook me. Diablo 3, I think, is just sort of like the big steaming pile of shit in the genre that everyone plays by mm-hmm. default. Like, because yeah. like if all you are is smooth animations, then Ben hit it right. Like then it's just, then it's just numbers popping up meaninglessly on a screen and there's a million things and who cares? Like those games are supposed to be about the sort of min max and the crafting your character and the customization and getting into the nitty gritty, which is why path of exile is so amazing why Diablo is garbage. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, I, I can't, I can't stand that the Diablo feel when you're like, you're like rushing through everything to get to the shitty gameplay, the the shitty uh, smashing on your shit to kill everything. It's like I don't, I don't like it. People, people really like the story and they really get into it. I, I can, I can see it's a re- the lore is really cool, but I think they've really fucked up with the gameplay in it. Yeah. Diablo has just got such a nice polish. You know, Blizzard. That's all it has in my Bl- Yeah, but Blizzard so. games, I just feel like Blizzard does a great job of making their games look and feel really, really good. And I feel like a lot of people look for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's very well, true. <laughs> well, that's the th- Like, I played Diablo 3 for a little while, and it, it just could not hold my attention. Like, I, I just felt like it, it felt mindless, and then I got to the end, and I expecting what it sounds like path of exile has with with some good min max and stuff and i do enjoy that from time to time it it, it wasn't it wasn't uh i don't yeah. know presented in a very like friendly way no matter what you do you're gonna be relatively fine in end game like there's no failure point like there's no risk you're just gonna plow forward and left click and no matter what you do you will succeed you right know? Right. I never I, played I, any of the older ones, so I can't I can't speak to those. But the Diablo three just it left a bit yeah, of taste like, in my mouth. I don't know, like Diablo two, like I literally played that game forever, and I don't that know if it was just I don't know if it was just because I was younger, you know, and you like you're just not like and and like everything wasn't as advanced back then. Like now, I I don't know. I feel like everybody has a short attention attention span, including me, because like Diablo three, I feel like it was fun. But like after you do it for like a few days, I'm like, all right, I'm done with this. Mm-hmm. Can't do it anymore. Whereas like Diablo two was like the same thing, but I could do it for all of eternity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I see, I see people um, that play Warframe like all day, every day. Yep, that was me. And I've never, I've never experienced it, but I, like I hear. That's terrible. Don't th- play it. Don't play it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, worst game, terrible. worst game I ever played. <laughs> it, it's up there. Are you being serious? Oh, or are you joking no, around? No, no, he played it for a long ass time. What the hell is he talking? I'm mostly serious. Like, oh, okay. so 
it's just sort of, it's kind of a stream life thing like it was working for me so i kept playing it oh uh, um, okay and i didn't hate it because i do like arpgs and it it basically is that um but after a while like it gave me motion sickness and it's just like if you want to do any one thing you have to grind these 500 other things first and they each take 10 hours and it's like i think i've had enough like <laughs> and that was when my channel was growing the most i mean those were the days when we would get to 300 viewers and it was like i just finally was like i don't care anymore like i have to walk away and mm. i drew the line yeah what what is that like having like that many people in your channel at once i don't know if i've ever talked to anybody that has had like that large of a viewership yeah it's not okay so it's not totally unlike having no one because you you can pick and choose some things out of chat but it will start to kind of run together um especially if like you can have 300 in a dead chat but um when it's bumping um it's just sort of like you just have to go and you have to do your thing whatever that may be as a streamer mm. um and you almost ignore it and then you just you kind of it becomes a game of just grabbing a comment here and there to use as like a lifting off point for your your monologue or your narrative that you do when you're streaming gotcha. um i mean but it, it, it can be it can be i mean it just depends it depends on your mindset like it can be whoa overwhelming what the shit is happening right now but um you know they're just nerds sitting at their computer and they're there the same, just like you. And like, it's just fun, you know? And, yeah. and they're all there to make the best dick joke in chat. Too. So like, <laughs> I got the best dick joke. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun and like, I don't know for me, I, it, it's like a profession. And so it's hard to be like, it, it, I, it was work like when i when i was seeing those numbers i was doing my job and i was working and i was right. thinking through um all the things that go into trying to maintain those numbers or convert them um into regular viewers etc 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 um so it's fun i mean it's great it's it's why you do it because you want more people to hear your dick jokes that's why you guys record <laughs> the podcast because you want more yeah. viewers I mean, like that's that why, is that's the, the only reason yeah. that we even invited you on is just to hear yeah. your best one so yeah to hear the best dick jokes yeah that's yeah. really what we've been waiting for yeah Wait, none of them slipped in yet that's but did okay, you ever did you, <laughs> get <it>. <laughs> did you ever hit a point where and I, I don't know if this is like a point or maybe this happens gradually but did you ever hit a point where because you seem like someone who's probably pretty interactive with your chat like yeah where it just got so big that you couldn't reply and then you know you you felt like i don't know if you would feel bad you couldn't respond to people because you probably wanted yeah. to but did that did that ever occur um it it well it still does and so the people that happens to um i don't want to say are seeking that but it just candidly i think a lot of the people that are drawn to watching a broadcast for six hours have that sort of time and they're looking for community um, and mm -hmm. so when you miss them, that's a frustrating experience for them because they're, they're craving interaction. They're, they're there because they're craving community, they're craving interaction for whatever reason. There could be a myriad of reasons why. Um, and so like, even, you know, I'll stream to 15 to 30 nowadays. And even with that, I will miss things and get the comment like, Hey, you missed my thing. Um, mm. and, and oh, I wow. got one kid in particular who gets kind of upset by it um but he's a kid and i get where he's coming from um when it's a huge chat when it's you know fresh off a huge raid and there's 400 people all going crazy nobody expects you to see it like there's no yeah no expectations for yeah you there's no one. expectation for you to be like um the, the one <laughs> the one thing you run in there is like the guy who's been with you for two years who's like oh man eggs a big shot now and he's not reading yeah. my message uh -huh. you know oh, i that. could totally see that yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the the thing is, like, unfortunately, like people, you don't have the bandwidth to, you know, communicate. Right. It's just not, it's not possible. So, um, there should be like a guide for people to like realize, like, mm. just mm. so they yeah. have the knowledge to realize, like, 
hey, he literally can't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, and a good mod team is that. Like a good good moderation team for a streamer. Oh yes. Okay. Um, will their job very much is to grab those you know because if if like i'm playing warframe there's 400 people a couple of those things are genuine questions about gameplay or whatever else so a good mod will be like hey he did a youtube on that or hey the answer is this or hey i could help you with that yeah um and so that's hugely important for for streaming to those sort of numbers yeah yeah i never really thought about the the moderators Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. in order to facilitate and and speak for you in a, in yeah. a way. So you yeah, gotta they're be massive. Really... They, they welcome you people in because like, and the other thing is if somebody fresh comes in and I'm in the middle, like if I'm in the middle of a bit about how I've never had sex with my wife because she's doing, <laughs> doing Bible study with some guy named Roger in my bedroom, like, like if I'm doing that bit and a fresh face comes in and tries to interact on a more like, hey, how do you do this in Dead by Daylight? That, then the mod sweeps in and sort of like, hey, we're a bunch of sort of irreverent goofballs. Welcome in. Uh, I can help you with that or whatever mm-hmm. else and and buy me the time to finish my bit. Yeah. Yeah. Roger's at it again, yeah. huh? I had the same dude, problem. Dude, you know, how I know, <laughs> you know how I know he's the real deal? Because the first time he came over, I, I was like, where's your Bible, bro? And he pointed to his head. He said, I got it all up here. Bro. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> right. Damn. It's really good. Fucking prick. <laughs> well hey who don't go ahead adam i'm sorry i'm sorry i, I just talking about moderators like who, who are these people uh <laughs> like to, to you I'm, I'm just generally genuinely curious yeah like, do you uh, do you pay a mod financially or like how does the transaction work i guess like what is the partnership like oh man you're putting me on the spot so yeah, other that, that's a, that's a, no, i'm sorry just very uh just very like vaguely you don't have to go into specific uh, general I just practices don't know how that relationship works um some mods can be paid by big enough channels that's not unheard of um generally the (laughs) for big streamers it actually works the other way the people who end up modded are the people who make the biggest donos like buying mod is sort of a thing in twitch it's sort of frowned upon even oh wow um i remember watching shroud one night mod somebody and he got a bunch of shit like oh you just did that because you know he pays or whatever um mm. for me it's a little different because you, every, every streamer you, you know has a leadership team i mean you, you guys have a large crew on the podcast you might be your own leadership team because there's enough voices there or whatever um, but i need voices because i'm doing a solo show um to tell me when i suck to tell me what i'm doing right etc cetera, etc cetera. um so for me the mod team was i'm going through in my head i didn't know any of them before i started streaming now that i think of it Um, they're all people I met through stream and they're all people who, um, I identified as being intelligent. I mean, that was number one. I wanted problem solvers, um, kind, intelligent, funny problem solvers was just basically the criteria. Um, so for me, you know, if I'm only streaming to 15 to 30, um, I got a mod team of about six, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but they're, they're also the core leadership team. Like nobody buys mod on my channel. That's just not. And I don't just mod the guy who hangs out all the time. And there's plenty of people who do that, and that's fine. Um, But it happens to be the same thing in terms of leadership and and mod team for me. Um, And my guys are amazing. I don't – none of them are paid. Um, Every now and then when, you know, if I had a good month, they're going to get a $5 or $10 Steam card or something from me as a thank you because that's all we can really – that's what a good month for me is. Um, And so that's about the extent of it. Um, you know, huge streamers. I don't know if you're familiar with Co Carnage. He does Mod Day, mm-hmm. where his senior mods uh, split the revenue for that day. Um, so everyone who donates their bits or subs or whatever, that money goes straight to their mods. Um, like I could do that, but depending on the day, that could be two dollars split six ways. Um, so you know, who knows? But yeah. um, gotcha. Yeah, no, yeah, that... we uh, didn't want to put you on the spot there, man. I, I just <laughs> genuinely had no idea. No, yeah. I kind of loved it. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea how it worked. Well, one of the things that I've noticed, I've been watching a lot of because I'm, you know, crippled now, just mm. jumping around, crawling around, crawling upstairs and stuff. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I've been watching a lot of Twitch, and what I'm, what I notice is like. The moderators are just like they're there. They're basically viewers, you know. They they yeah. they enjoy yeah. it just as much as the viewers. Yeah. So it, it it's it's just like, hey, why don't I give you some responsibilities while you're here watching? You know what I mean? And yeah. 
Yeah. And it and they get the it, it feels the then it's like they're in, invested more in it. And it's a nice thing actually. I think it's re- I think it's really cool. I've 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 had a lot of communication with um when I'm meditating or doing breathing exercises, I listen to ASMR maybe like half the time. And um when I when I come out of the meditation or breathing exercise, I'll be I'll talk to the moderator and be like, Oh, thanks. That was relaxing. You know, I appreciate it. And they'll be like, and they'll, you know, they'll chat with you and stuff. It's cool. It's nice. Uh, I think it's, it's, I really like that aspect of uh, Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're, they're cult, they're tone setters for the culture of your community. Very mm-hmm. much so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, staying on the theme of Twitch, I, I really want to talk about the sub only streams and these uh, violations with these game companies' terms of service. And I'm actually glad that you're on here, Greg, because you probably will know more about this than us. Mm, or maybe you'll be able to speak to it. I've a sub-only stream. Oh, perfect. Yeah, well, this is going to tie mm. in great then. Um, <laughs> so if, if you haven't heard, uh, Twitch recently released a new feature, which is in beta. It's sub-only streams. Um, personally, I think it's a great way for streamers and creators to hold special events and give back to the community that supports them the most. Um, however, it's recently been discovered that these sub-only streams go directly against many large gaming companies' terms of service. And a few examples of this. Uh, Riot Games. So in, in their legal document, it says that anyone is allowed to do gameplay streaming of its games and accept donations so long as non-subscribers can still watch the games concurrently. Um, Valve says that you can't charge users to, cha- to view or access your videos. Blizzard says that you can't force a viewer to pay a fee to be able to view your productions, and other companies such as Epic Games, Nintendo, and Bethesda have forbidden creators from selling content that they've created through any kind of paywall. So, I mean, I'd love to get your thoughts and feelings just towards this and and how these uh, interactions with these... I mean, these are giant companies, you know, these aren't like little indie developers that might have one game. These are like the big players in the industry, I feel like. Yeah. Good. Well, and say, and so is Twitch. And so, what's so mind blowing about this to me is the potential that Twitch not only didn't do their homework, but didn't even like pick up the phone. Like, I, there's a side of my brain that seem that feels like this is so inane that it has to be like kind of a clerical logistical oversight, and that this is in all these games TOS because they were trying to prevent something else i don't know like the fucking stream mates having all the games up or something like i don't know it, it just it doesn't make sense because twitch is this huge huge company with tons of lawyers on retainer i mean you got to remember like europe is trying to basically push twitch out right now i mean th- th- these guys have to be so versed in copyright law and terms of service etc cetera, etc cetera, that the idea that they could push out this feature and be oblivious is insane yeah well i haven't but it looks like they might have like (laughs) back up back up for a second so what's going on in europe i actually haven't heard that at all oh what the hell is it called they just passed a law that says in two ish years they're going to phase out um basically all secondhand consumption of media so if you're watching someone else play a game the fact that the developer isn't directly profiting off of that means you can't do it it's going to be in violation of this new interpretation of their copyright laws. What? Um, and it just passed. It was I forget the name. Is, is that yeah, like is it. that like YouTube gameplay and stuff too? It's going to be YouTube gameplay. It's going to be Twitch gameplay. Like as of right now, the way like it passed, and so it's just and it's supposed to be two years away before implementation. That makes Who no knows sense if to me. It'll get overturned or how it will be implemented. We don't really know, but that's the way it reads currently. That's insane. Um, it's super insane. I stream during the day, like half my audience is from Europe. I mean, well, it's it's wild. Why yeah. would they even I mean, why would they even want to do that? I mean, maybe I'm just naive, but I feel like financially the ecosystem is that games if if a huge streamer or a huge, you know, video maker on YouTube is going to plug your game and make content around it, you're mm-hmm. going to reap the re- the rewards from that from being the company that made the game originally. Uh-huh. Yeah absolutely it's, like, it's advertising developers developers <laughs> love streamers De- streamers are constantly paid huge contracts to play games for just hours i mean they're going to make 50 grand in a day some of these big boys just for playing the new whatever game for four hours i mean developers love it so it's crazy yeah who yeah. who, who yeah. wins, well, it, who it, wins the, from that the, the eu is fucking insane like it, it's they got to, it's like a big government 
as it gets. Yeah, but who, you know? but so who it's, wins it's, from it's, that? I mean, I don't even know why they would want to do that. It doesn't that. matter. It's just so, it's it's an idea that they have. It ain't yeah. going to work. I don't know. I, I <laughs> yeah, feel like, I, no, I feel like there's got to be somebody that's pushing for that. Yeah, for, there's got to be. I, 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 yeah, there has with, to be. I had viewers tell me about it. They're like, well, this will be it. Enjoy the next two years of us. I was like, what? <laughs> well, maybe, <laughs> maybe to put, ticking, well, yeah. think about it. Maybe to put some pressure on American companies like Google, who owns YouTube, and Amazon, who owns Twitch. I mean, that's a lot of fucking money that they would be losing. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe uh, put together th their own platforms or something. I don't, I don't know. I'm just trying to. I mean, nobody's making a dime on YouTube anymore. So, like, yeah, true, true. The whole the whole thing is just going crazy. And tw Twitch really is. That's why you see so many YouTubers going to Twitch right now because there's still that sort of direct payment model of I can PayPal you this money and no strings attached or whatever because mm -hmm. I want to support my favorite creators. Or Patreon is so huge um, because yeah, I mean, YouTube. There's no money in YouTube, and who knows what's about to happen in Europe? Yeah, that's crazy. But wow, okay, yeah, you just kind of like shocked my whole entire world. But um, <laughs> uh, sorry. just just getting back to the to the story here, I I totally agree. Um, I feel like Twitch would have had to have known about this if if they didn't. You, I think you're absolutely yeah. correct. Somebody or an entire team of people didn't do their homework for like yeah. years regarding yeah. this. But. Somebody, yeah. somebody, somebody fucked up. <laughs> There's no way that you could that could happen. Well, Bezos is gonna have their heads. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think do you think DLive has something to do with this? I don't know if you guys got the notification today, but uh PewDiePie and was it James Charles were streaming Minecraft together. So maybe, you know, it was kind of like a either. jerk reaction that, you know, someone else might take the throne that Twitch had to do something big. I didn't I hear know. that. What were they were playing Minecraft together? I it literally was a, a note because what somebody got on DLive the one now I get yeah that apparently it was like a big event well, not to get totally off topic but but maybe yeah. maybe there's something some i guess something underlying here that, you know from the fringes that that isn't directly apparent obviously at this point but that, that you would make this kind of rush to see, i mean greg you said you did a sub only yeah, we Stream? were. I think we might have been the first sub only because I do a two a day schedule. I take a 90 minute lunch break. And literally with like five minutes before I was going live, I got the email that I had been accepted into their beta program for it. And I was like, fuck it. Let's do the first. Let be the first. Like, I, I'm not sitting here like I'm not going to be the guy who's going to do sub only everything. That's ridiculous. Don't get me wrong. But I was like, this way I can at least be educated in my opinion about yeah. it. Right. So I did the sub only stream. We had a couple of Twitch staffers even in our chat. Um, and the way it's set up currently is you get a five minute preview. And then if you don't sub, you get kicked out of the channel. Um, and dude, people were popping in just to tell me what a pretentious no! son of a bitch fuck Ooh. up. I don't know anything wow. about growing a community. Like <laughs> the hate it was bad. I, I, after that stream, I, I had to go to my wife. I was like, I'm not right. Like that fucked with me. It, it was too much. Yeah. Um, but uh it's funny one of the twitch staffers even clipped me cursing out this kid because he was like oh you don't fucking know anything about what you're doing and i brought up his profile i was like you follow fucking 15 titty streamers what the shit do you know ah. <laughs> <laughs> and a twitch staffer clipped it but um <laughs> um That's but great. big picture i mean it's so the thing about twitch is there's something like 3 million people who have done a broadcast in the last 60 days or something. Um, it's huge. It's huge. And the amount of viewership is just massive. And they, it was actually, I'm stealing the wording from a friend of mine who was on our show this morning, actually. Um, and the way he worded it was Twitch is this big bloated thing that, and, it, and it's super slow to kind of course correct. If there's anything wrong, it's going to take it forever to figure it out and fix it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the appeal. You brought up D Live. Like, D Live is a joke, in my opinion. Like, it's great that they spent all that money on PewDiePie, but that doesn't change the fact that when he's not streaming, they have 100 viewers across the entire platform. Right. Um, Mixer wow. has 20,000 people watching it right now. It's a joke. Um, and so, but the thing they have going for them, is that well 
they have more eyes and hands on everything they're doing. They can course correct quickly. They can actually read Valve and Blizzard's terms of service before <laughs> they create a feature. <laughs> um, and I think I think you're right. I think you know you have Mixer with like this crazy quick latency feature. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but basically you stream instantaneous. It's insane. Mm -hmm. um, you do have D Live hyping the PewDiePie stuff, and then you have the big bloated. You know what once was the cool you know, place to be, which has now become sort of your grandpa's streaming platform in this <laughs> weird way, trying to be innovative. Um, and they, what we're all laughing about is as, as broadcasters is like sub only is that's, that is the future. Like m new monetization methods are going to come whether people like it or not, but it's become this lightning rod. Whereas there's so many other, things wrong with twitch right now um that everyone's freaking out about this one thing that ultimately won't matter um but yeah it will look bad if they just fuck this up yeah so i was i think you said it briefly there that this is generally just looked at as a new way of monetization for channels is that yeah. that's really the only benefit to having a sub only stream so people are going to use it for a variety of ways and like idiots are going to use it to try to they'll think that that five minute preview will be enough to get someone to sub or whatever. And, and, you know, there's a lot of accusations that that's how everyone's going to do it. Um, and that, um, it's going to divide communities between the haves and have nots or whatever. And it's going to push people out. Um, to me, what a sub only stream is, um, it's a, it's a one off couple times a month creating value for the people who support you because at the end of the day um like i like you have viewers who are just like i love what you do do it forever and then you're like yeah yeah i would love to i'm gonna need to make a buck and then mm -hmm. they go oh no how dare you <laughs> like, yeah, right. and, and that's sort of the dichotomy that's emerging right now you see the content creator world is sort of split 50 50 on how they feel about this but viewers are almost exclusively against it um which i think just goes to show you content creators are thinking like professionals they're thinking like people who you know like i want to feed those two girls out in the living room right now that would be great um so i need to find ways to do that so i can do a one-off sub only stream um you know to hype something in particular something unique uh and then i just throw that up on youtube or as a vod for free a week later anyway Yep. I mean, that already exists. Like, if you guys, I don't know if you guys are doing the Patreon thing. Like, that already exists. People already make content exclusive for certain periods of time or whatever else. So, Twitch doing that too, like, of course they're going to do that too. Um, but yeah, this whole thing that came out today or last night is super weird and it's going to be interesting. I feel like, um, I feel like everybody's still, like, the whole entire world is still getting used to the fact that content creators can make a living on twitch and on yeah. youtube and well maybe not mm. youtube anymore but and even though yeah, it's been yeah. around for a while it seems like everyone's kind of behind the curve even the people that watch their favorite creators on a daily basis yeah mm -hmm. and that's really strange to to hear that. that that's one of the things that like people are willing to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to go to a, a you know sit down with a psychologist or you know a therapist or whatever and literally like so when I listen to some of the ASMR or if I go into a good stream, like I'm sometimes like that helps me go th get through the day. Like it's, it's not saying like, I don't deal with a lot of stress or anxiety typically, but it just cheers you up. And it's like, why wouldn't you sub or why wouldn't you throw like a, and like if anybody, mm. if everybody who gets a little bit of enjoyment or is mm. able to make the decision that, you know, they got something out of this or they feel like they're a part of a community or they feel like they may have right. like, even if it's just a uh, acquaintance relationship with, with a streamer or something like that, like, yep. why wouldn't you just throw a little bit of money? It's, no, you know, it's people just who been... throw all of their money at it and don't have any money. I feel bad for those people, but people who do have money or people who make a decent living and they throw five or 10 bucks, you know, every three yeah. or four times to jump on, it just makes sense to me. I think yeah. it's just been free for so long that it's just the expectation. I think if you saw if you sign on a Twitch every night and I mean you watch Greg or whoever, you know, you watch your favorite streamer and you, you can do it for free for six hours a day, you just like kind of forget that you even can pay. 
I think. I don't, I don't even know if it's like that they don't want to, but it's just, if you can get it available for free, I think that people just take it for granted. And I don't I think, think that, I don't uh, think they realize that if they don't support it, then all of a sudden it could just be gone. Yep. I, I think, I think that's definitely true. And I also think that we have to keep in mind uh, the demographic of people that were, um, that are watching Twitch. And I think it's predominantly, it's getting, as the industry is getting bigger and bigger, you know, the, it's getting to a wider range of people, but predominantly with Twitch, it seems like it's a lot of young people um, and they don't have any fucking money <laughs> or they're spending their parents money. I, that's a joke I always tell is, um, you know, I'll get a college kid who drops a few bucks and I'll, I'll pick on him. I'm like, what the shit are you doing? You can't afford this choice nah. right now. You need to read a fucking Dave Ramsey book, kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's one of the things that I, because it, there's just a huge, it's the, the younger generation love Twitch. Like some of these kids don't even play video games and they're on there watching right, Twitch. Right. They, they love it. They gobble it up. And I think that like, as they get older and as people realize that like, it actually takes a lot of effort and a lot mm -hmm. of consistency mm -hmm. and you have to be, if you really want to be, big you have to be a professional you know you have you have to follow the rules and you have to be personable and you have to be in most cases kind uh, or like a doctor disrespect if you're a right, like right. that and, uh, you know but um a lot of this is is just like it's it's a learning curve for not only the audience but content creators and i think eventually this is going going to pan out to be a good thing for bo both at the end but there's going to be a period of time Growing where it's going pain. to be bad yes what 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 makes twitch so unique is the interaction and it's something it's been a learning process for me because um i have had people tell me like you build these relationships and they are looking at your face like all day and they're they're learning your it was sort of the micro nonverbal sort of mm -hmm. ticks of your face. They know, yep. they know my expressions as well as my wife does. And I don't know the damndest thing about them. Yeah. I'm, I'm reading a chat and I'm trying to, you know, if they're relatively new and I haven't had a chance, I don't, I can't figure out how old they are half the time or where they're mm -hmm. from. Like, I don't know the damndest thing. And they'll start to really view you as a friend. Mm -hmm. And, um, like for me, like, look, <laughs> you're great, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know you as well as you know me. Yeah. And, and so what I think what's happening in this, in this tension is it's sort of like, what the fuck? Why would my friend push me out? Yes. And it's okay. That's not what's uh, happening. That's, that's interesting. Not what's happening. Well, that's and interesting. I think that, I think that's, that's synonymous with younger people as well. That's yeah, something yeah. that you go away to college or you, high school and you know you may interact with people and then like when you're younger you're crawler you know you're you're not mm. as kind in most cases <laughs> right. you're not as kind and you're a fucking asshole or you're a bitch you know mm. and like then they think that that's like life well the people will realize like i i think as they i hope as they get older they'll realize like Oh, then they realize the nuances of what's actually going on mm -hmm. here rather yeah. than just like them perceiving someone and creating their own narrative and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, it mm -hmm. seems to me, and I don't want to make this general blanket statement for all viewers on Twitch, but I think, Greg, to what you were saying that before is that if you have six hours a night or a day to watch somebody stream, mm -hmm. I think that that's a certain type of person and you have to have a lot of free time. And I think that a lot mm -hmm. of people are looking for those personal connections mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. Twitch. Mm -hmm. when, when, and, and even busy know, people are like it, yeah. yeah and i'm yeah. not saying that you know i'm not saying that like everyone on twitch is a loner or they can't be social i'm just mm -hmm. saying that i think that a lot of people that are spending time on that platform are looking for a personal connection for one reason or another for uh, I, yeah you're right just to echo it though like for me when i first started watching twitch it was because i worked in an environment where i mean i'm not that young and i was the youngest guy by like 25 years uh where i oh, used okay. to work yeah and and it was just like there was no like outside of my wife there was no and so all of a sudden i find myself on twitch um because i think it lends itself to community building in a way other platforms don't you know yeah i think that's yeah. true mm -hmm. yeah and i mean in in speaking personally 
I get, I get, I feel better after uh, I get on a tweet Twitch, and it's mostly interaction through with moderators, a little bit through streamers and stuff. But it, it's like there's a problem in society right now where like we have this, we have stigmas about people and like our interactions with people at work are so confined and how we can and what we can say and. And then you see somebody at the gym, and it's like, oh, you're just a bull- you're just fucking bullshitting, you know. And Twitch offers something that's a little bit different than that. You can you yeah. can open up a little bit, and also it puts it puts the individual who's in the audience in like a power position because sure. that like you're talking about, they don't have the or you don't have the visuals on them, the expressions, the um, you know, the hand movements, the right. any gesture you're making. Um, you don't have that information, and they do. So it, it, it's it's a little bit of a power trip at the same time. They think that they 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 they, and I th- it's mostly subcon. Uh, it's it's something that they're doing subconsciously, but they know that they have that power over you, and they and it's it, it's people like it. <laughs> That's a subtle occasional thing for me. Um, I have some friends who are female streamers, and it gets fucked up in that dynamic. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so fucking. <laughs> I, so I mod for a friend of mine who's a female streamer. And, and like the joke is like she's a much smaller community than me. But like modding for her is 10 times harder than modding for me. It's the big leagues. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, can I can only imagine. imagine. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I don't even like want to know what's said or done. I, yeah, yeah. I bet it's amazing. I, I've seen people or heard about people with viewers showing up at their door. Uh, uh, female streamer yeah just well, that's i mean that's the fucking nightmare right yep mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. well it's it's hard because testosterone you know dicks <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, testosterone. what i'm hearing here is you guys are building a really case for the eu pushing twitch out <laughs> uh, should have been done, should have been done years ago <laughs> right right <laughs> well hey um let's jump down to this this last story of the day here um so summer games done quick 2019 raised three million dollars for doctors without borders which is a great cause and it beats last year's record of 2.1 million uh they received over fifty thousand donations during the past week with an average of 60 dollars per donation which i found to be uh incredible upon first reading um but i don't know if you guys like games done quick or speed runs i know that i i love to watch them especially like on youtube after the fact but uh I don't know if you guys watch that or if there's any other awesome gaming charity events that you guys know of. I mean, Greg, I know that you just said you had your own mm-hmm. uh, as well, which is which is very cool. But, I, you know, I, I don't know if you guys know of any other ones that um, do something similar. No, not me. Games Done Quick is, is usually like the, the hard and fast one for yeah. me. It's like yeah. the big one, yeah. I would be interested. I should have looked this up, but I don't do homework. Um, is like I so I streamed for Extra Life. I would be curious how much Extra Life raises through content creators during the course of a whole year, and compare that to GDQ. And St. Jude is real big with content creators. I think Lupo mm. did a St. Jude stream today. Um, so it'd be I interesting see to see how Jude. Mm-hmm, it'd be interesting to see how those compare. Um, I know. So like I'm. Probably not well because I'm in the top 200 uh, most money raised for Extra Life this calendar year, um, wow. which at, which at twelve hundred dollars isn't that much. Like that seems mm-hmm. low to be that high. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I, 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 it'd be interesting to look up. Yeah, but it's not that small. I mean, it's not like mm-hmm. ten bucks. I mean, it's significant. That is. Yeah. Uh, what what is? I'm sorry. What is Extra Life? So Extra Life uh, works with the uh, Children's Miracle Network. So it's children's hospitals. And the way it works is as a content creator, you sign up and then your uh, pledges and your donations will go towards your local uh, Children's Miracle Network hospital. So like cool. I that my money went directly to a DFW hospital. I'm in, I'm in the Dallas area. Um, so that money went directly kind of local to me. Yeah. Cool. Is that a pretty That's easy awesome, process man. then? Like it, it wasn't. Uh, yes extra life is brilliant like as a content as a streamer in particular it's super easy like i i create my um account and then i actually had a buddy of mine who run qu- runs the quote unquote team um but every team member still plays for their local thing it's a it's a loose affiliation but then i go in there and i i i 
do two things. I click two things and now my alerts are synced. So I get, you know, on page or on stream alerts uh, for every dono that comes in and we can hype it up. Um, they make it super easy and it's brilliant that they do it because then, you know, anyone can hop in and, and raise some money for a good cause. Yeah. Well, that sounds fantastic. I mean, yeah. uh, comparatively, I mean, when you look at the games, generally, uh, in most cases that I've seen, it's like the giant convention and what I imagine those people are like invited to be there. But yeah, well, that's a totally, totally different animal. Yeah. Right. And in this, in that scenario, I mean, that sounds, I, I'm just happy to hear that you know, it's something to easy to get e ease of in. access. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I, I don't want you to downplay, you know, the, the amount of money you raised. Oh no, we're hyped. Shit. Don't get me uh, wrong. Uh, but like, yeah, that is amazing. Like yeah, that's, that's awesome. It's one of like the, the feel good things. Um, th that'll probably, you know, get me through the week. It's, like it's that. like top two, like all time memories I've got so far from this. Yeah. You know, one, one of the things that, um, people always say when they're when they're like well who's gonna how are we gonna you know what, what we're talking about healthcare and everything like that they're like well how are we gonna you know get money if we don't have the government do it or whatever um it's like this these are the ways that you can innovate and like raise money in charitable ways in order to help people who are in need and it's it's one of the things that um people talk about about a lot that like they they can never get down to the crux of the matter is like examples why and this is an example you know it's mm. it seems like it's a lot of fun too right i'm i mean i i saw a lot of your your tweets over the past few days here yeah and i imagine there was like a lot of hype you know obvious, obviously with you yeah. but with your community and P people really rally behind it the words i used was i, I you know it's we we think and plan ahead of time but like what, what i kept telling everyone was th this was actually my first charity stream and so what i came out hot with saying is prove prove to me how stupid i am for not doing this earlier let's let's mobilize today i want everyone on social media all day long get all the lurks in the chat so that way we're higher up on directories um and let's just push push the shit out of this um and i i don't i guess i can't say who um because it was technically anonymous but um you know our stretch goal so i have to dye my hair purple as part of this like I don't oh know no i did see that tweet so. yeah 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 so i gotta do that i'm two o'clock tomorrow <laughs> my appointment <laughs> uh, oh, but, uh, my Greg. stretch goal was 500 bucks we hit that in the first hour um and then i say all right well let's think of a goal something goofy for a thousand bucks and then i just kind of haphazardly say maybe a 24-hour stream and then i'm mumbling as i'm updating the goal i'm mumbling about it like i don't know i don't know and then i see on the page five hundred dollars donated from do it pussy <laughs> <laughs> it was that's nuts great. that's great oh. yeah yeah and then we raised another 200 the course of the day yeah <laughs> Ah, that's funny. Mm. So we well, have something to look forward then to here coming up. Oh, oh that twenty-four hours not happening. No, the uh, uh, the, the, the hair. No, the, the hair. hair yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll be looking out for it. <laughs> I was, I've done two of the twenty-four hours. That, that that's done. one of my biggest things, man. I can't stand the fucking colored hair. <laughs> Like all you the only streamers. live once, I figured. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not giving. I'm not getting. Well, your, your yours is a particular situation. I don't like. Like it's like a younger person thing or something. You know, doing coloring that hair. Well, I'm I clinging don't know. onto my youth here. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about every other streamer who's got blue or yeah, no, I, rainbow ninja, hair. The ninja shit. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Just mimicking him. My uh, podcast partner has purple hair. I can't wait till she hears this. <laughs> oh, oh, you, guys can, you guys can uh, team up now that'll be great yeah well she didn't if she didn't do it for streaming then i i don't care no, I she think did it because she forever yeah. okay there you go that's fine <laughs> she's cool by me <laughs> love you girl <laughs> right. well, hey, let's uh let's wrap there that was that was really fun greg thanks a lot for coming on man that was that was really enjoyable I had a blast. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. Hey, uh, please check out Greg. Um, we'll post all of the links to his channels and websites in the description of the YouTube video. 
uh you know but please check him out unless you hate uh really fun and welcoming community or if you hate giving to charity definitely don't go see him um we're we have the show on spotify and itunes and youtube as well along with our other content and uh thanks so much for listening and we will hopefully see you next week